hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel in today's tutorial we're going to be learning how to make this bubble patch dress for this dress i'll be making use of four different ankara print fabric and i also made sure that each print has a color that matches each other this first fabric will be used for the neck design and the sleeves and i made use of half yard the second fabric will be used for the upper parts of the dress and i made use of one and a half yard the third fabric would be used to make the band and the straps at the center of the dress and I made use of one yard. The fourth fabric would be used to make the lower part of the dress and I made use of one and a half yards. So let's start with the upper part of the dress. I folded this fabric into four so that after cutting I would have both the front piece and the back piece of the upper part cut together. The first step is to roll the starting line which is also referred to as the shoulder line. From the center of the fold on this side, I marked a neck width which is 3 inches. For a plus size person, you should mark 4 inches. Now I went ahead to mark 1 inch below the starting line which would be the neck depth for just the back piece. Now to get the neck depth for the front piece which is a v-neck line, I'll place my tape from the starting line to mark a neck depth of 7 inches. For a plus size person, you should mark 8 inches. Now I'll connect the neck depth to the neck width to form a v-neck line. From the center of the fold again, I would place the tape to mark my shoulder measurement divided by 2. And the next measurement after the shoulder point would be for my sleeve length. My full sleeve length is 13 inches and I want to attach a band to it as well. So I want the band to be 6 inches long. So I have to subtract that 6 inches from 13 and that will give me 7 inches. So I would add extra half inch to that 7 inches for sewing allowance and that will be 7 and half inches. And later on, I would attach the sleeve band to complete my desired sleeve length. Now, from the sleeve point, I marked one inch below that point, which would be the shoulder slope, to connect it to the neck width. To mark my sleeve opening, I'll be working with my bust point measurement as a guide. So, from my shoulder to bust point is 9.5 inches, and because the sleeve is very wide, I added extra 1.5 inches to that, and that is 11 inches altogether. So, I'll go ahead to rule a straight line across this point. Now, I connected these two points together to form a straight line, and this would be my sleeve opening. The next line is my hip line. From my shoulder to hip line is 25 inches. So I added extra half inch sewing allowance to the M for joining the lower part of the dress. One interesting thing about this dress is that it's a one size fits all dress. So on the hip line, I would place my hip circumference divided by 4. My hip circumference is 36 inches and if I divide by 4, that is 9 inches. After marking 9 inches, I added extra 8 inches to that. Now take note that if your hip measurement ranges from 36 to 50 inches, you can actually wear this dress comfortably with this my exact measurement. But if you still want to work with your measurement, all you have to do is just to divide your hip circumference by 4 and you add extra 8 inches to that. Now the next step is to curve the end of the sleeve opening in by half inch and then you curve it out to meet the hip circumference as shown. The next step is to add half inch sewing allowance to the top of the shoulder. Now I went ahead to trim out just the neckline for the back piece. So I pinned the upper part of my dress so it doesn't shift. Now I went ahead to place the fabric I'd be using for the lower part of this dress. And I folded it into four so that after cutting I would have both the front piece and the back piece of the lower part of my dress. Now I made sure that the M of the upper part is placed on the starting of this fabric in order to mark the circumference on this side. 
and since the upper part of this dress is from the shoulder to the hip line which is 25 inches i would subtract that 25 inches from the top of this new fabric and then i'll go ahead to mark my desired dress length so my dress length is 53 inches so i added extra two inches so in allowance to the end which made it 55 inches altogether so i ruled a straight line across this point now i'll go ahead to measure the circumference on the hip line for this side which is 18 inches and then i'll place the measurements here to subtract two inches from that 18 inches and to be 16 inches then i'll connect the hip circumference down to the m circumference as shown now i'm going to cut out the lower part following the direction of the truck So the next important thing I did was to notch the center of the fold at the top here so that I can be able to tell that this is the top part that will be attached to the hip line of the upper part. It's time to make the stitches so I'll be taking out the lower part for now. This is the front piece of my dress. I'm going to take out the back piece of the dress so that I can easily trim out the neckline for the front piece of the dress which is a V neckline. The next step is to make the facing for the front piece. So I'll go ahead to sketch it directly on the fabric. From the neck width, I marked 3 inches away. And then I'll go ahead to extend this point I marked vertically downwards to the hip line. From the end of this front piece, I placed my measuring tape to mark 4 inches above the end. And then I connected this point to meet this straight line I marked initially. Now I'm going to clean off this part because it's not needed anymore. From this side, I'm going to make a little curve here. Now I'm going to place a transparent interfacing directly on the facing I sketched so I can easily see the lines to follow through. To make the facing for the back piece, I would place my tape from the neck width to mark 3 inches, just the way I did for the front piece. But this time around, I will just keep marking 3 inches from the neckline to connect all points together. And I will go ahead to place an interfacing directly on it to trace out the facing for the back piece. For the facing on the front piece, I placed the interfacing on the folded fabric to cut out exactly the same shape, but I added half in an allowance to the side. Now I'm going to take the facing to my ironing board to iron the edges of the facing by half inch, following the direction of my finger. For the back piece of the facing, I placed the interfacing directly on my folded fabric to cut out exactly the same shape and I added half inch folding allowance to this side. And I also folded the folding allowance in by half inch. So this is a facing for both my front piece and the back piece. Now I'm going to place the back piece directly on the front piece to stitch the shoulders together. And to do this, I made sure that I had to open the folding allowance to meet each other then stitched by half inch and open the folding allowance on this side to stitch the shoulders together by half inch. The next step is to place the back piece on the front piece to stitch the shoulders together by half inch. After stitching the shoulders together, you will have them looking this way. Now take note that I'll be placing the right side of my facing directly on the neckline of the wrong side of the upper parts of this dress so that by the time i stitch the necklines together i'll be able to flip the face into the correct side of the fabric after pinning the neckline together i'll take the upper piece to the sewing machine to stitch the neckline following the direction of the truck After stitching the neckline, I would go ahead to notch the curved side of the neckline and the sharp V-shape on the side. 
after notching i would flip the facing to the right side of the fabric and i would also take this to the ironing board to iron the facing properly so i've ironed the facing and i pinned it properly now i'll take this to the sewing machine to stitch the edges of the facing following the direction of my finger so for the sleeve i'll be making use of the same fabric i used for the neckline as well i folded this fabric into two and the length of the sleeve i subtracted when i was cutting the dress was six inches so i added extra half inch for joining allowance which made it six and a half inches in length now for the width of the sleeve is 22 inches just the way it is for the sleeve opening on the dress and i duplicated this same fabric into two now i would place one of the sleeves directly on the sleeve opening to stitch by half inch and i would place the second sleeve on the sleeve opening on this side to stitch by half inch as well after i attached the sleeves the next thing i did was to cut out the band that will be placed directly on the hip line for both the front piece and the back piece of this dress so i'm going to be making use of the third fabric the length of the band is five inches and i folded the band into two so after stitching the bottom of the band it becomes two inches in length so since i'll be attaching this band to the back piece as well i'll duplicate the band now for the first band i'll place it on the hip circumference here to stitch the top of the band following the direction of my finger so i'll just be stitching just the top of the band that is folded right so the next thing i'll do is to place the second band on the back piece as well then i'll take this to the sewing machine to stitch the top of the folded part of this band as well all right so this is how it should be for both the front piece and the back piece and the next step is to make the straps i'll be using this third fabric to make the straps and then the length of my straps is 12 inches while the width of the straps is four inches so i'm going to fold the straps into two and then i'll take this to the sewing machine to stitch the edges following the direction of the chalk and i'm also going to secure one of the opening so that i can easily turn the straps to the right side of the fabric so before stitching the straps i actually placed it on my fabric to cut out 20 pieces of the straps because that was what i used to design my dress now i'm going to take this to the ironing board to iron those pieces properly now you can leave your straps this way or you might want to design yours just the way i did mine i just wanted mine to look more unique so what i did was to knot the top opening of the strap now, if you decide not to knot the top opening of your straps, it simply means that you just need about 15 pieces of these straps. But if you are knotting the top like I did, then 20 pieces of the straps is okay. I'll just keep knotting the top of each of my straps and that will be all. The next step is to place each straps on the hip line of the front piece and before doing that i would mark one inch away from this edge which would be for the sewing allowance by the sides now i went ahead to place the first strap after the one inch i marked and after that i'll keep placing each straps one inch after each other And at the end of this point, I would also mark one inch sewing allowance by the side to place the last straps. After this is done, I went ahead to pin all the straps. Now I took out one of the pieces, which is for the lower back piece, to place the right side of the fabric directly on the right side on the front piece and to stitch by half inch on this side. 
all right i've stitched this together and you can see how beautiful the straps is the next step is to place the second part of the lower piece directly on the back piece to stitch the edges together by half inch The next step is to place the back piece of the dress directly on the front piece of the dress to stitch the edges of this dress together by one inch following the direction of my finger. After stitching, you should notch the armhole and turn the dress to the right side of the fabric. The final step is to stitch the M of the dress by folding it half inch in and further folding it by half inch. So this is the final outcome of my dress and I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you are new to my channel, my name is Nancy. Please subscribe, share and like my tutorials and also put on your notification bell so you don't miss any of my tutorials. Thank you for watching and see you in my next tutorial.